Hey guys, welcome to the photo department. I'm out of coffee again, so I'm drinking squirt. It's grapefruit, soda. I need to cut back, it's too much sugar. I am going to be reviewing different films in the next couple of weeks because I have been trying all these new films that I haven't tried before and it's really exciting. It's also really difficult to figure out which films I'm going to really like or that are going to work with what I'm trying to shoot and I think that everyone can kind of relate to that especially if you don't have a lot of money to spend on film you don't really want to buy a bunch of stuff and then realize that like oh I should have bought like a faster film or like a different emulsion for this kind of work or whatever for instance uh, Kodak Ektar is one of my favorite films but it's really not that great for portraits, especially if it's people with fair skin, like white people. It makes the skin have like a red cast. So while I'll shoot tons of Ektar for like landscapes or architecture or just anything but people, when I shoot people, I like to avoid Ektar. But for shooting at night, there are a lot of options. There are a couple different films that you can get that have a higher speed ISO, which makes it more sensitive. For instance, Kodak Portra 400 would be considered a medium fast film. It's faster than like 100 or 200, but it's still not as fast as other films like Kodak Portra 800, which would be considered a high speed film. There aren't a lot of alternatives to Kodak Portra 800. Uh, it's a really good film, got pretty low grain. It looks really great when pushed or pulled. Um, it looks especially good if it's overexposed by like a stop. You get these nice pastel colors and it's got a little bit of a more magenta shift and it, it's very pleasing. But I don't shoot a lot of Portra 800. In fact, I don't shoot a lot of high speed film in general except for these last couple weeks. Uh, the last video I posted was a video about Fujifilm Natura 1600, which is a super fast color negative film. And then this last week I decided to shoot Cinestill 800T, which is another fast high speed color negative film. This is the 120 medium format version. They also make it in the 35 millimeter version. And what Cinestill film is, uh, the guys who started Cinestill got the Kodak Vision 3 5129, which is a cinema film for making movies. And they wanted a way to make it safe for it to be developed in C41 chemistry instead of being developed how you would normally uh, motion picture film, which is more of an advanced process and very difficult to do and it's also expensive. So to make Kodak Vision 3 safe for processing in C41 labs, the guys at Cinestill had to figure out a way to remove the Remjet layer from the back of the Kodak film. The Remjet layer is basically this carbon backing that protects the film and if you take pictures of lights, uh, like car headlights or street lights or any other bright point light, um, it'll have like a red glow and that's what that anti-halation layer is meant to avoid. So because they were able to remove that Remjet layer, we now can process this in any lab. Cinestill 800T is the film that I shot this week and it's 800T because it is tungsten balanced, which means that this film is balanced for tungsten light and tungsten light is about 3200K. So you use this film at night with street lights, indoor lighting, that kind of thing, or any other kind of tungsten lighting that you might have on set. So you can use this film in sunlight as well, but daylight is 5500K, so in order to do that, you want to use an 85B orange filter over your lens, and what that's basically gonna do is warm up the scene so that your pictures don't come out all blue and weird. So why did I decide to use this film? Well, I was at my favorite photo shop, which is Glass Key Photo in San Francisco. They just recently moved to a new location and I'm ready to go check it out, say hi to the guys, pick up some stuff. I picked up some C41 chemicals and some film. Uh, I saw that they had Cinestill in 120. I had never shot the medium format version. I've only shot the 35 millimeter version. And I don't think that I did a very good job shooting the 35 millimeter version. Uh, I believe I shot most of that roll in daylight and it just didn't come out very great. It was like an experiment and I didn't do a very good job experimenting. So I wanted to give it another go and really see what this film could do in 
low light capabilities with tungsten light in the way that it was meant to be shot. So I got this film and I started planning a shoot so that I can really put this film through its paces and I ended up shooting a friend of mine in Mountain View in her swimming pool and the pool is surrounded by tungsten lighting. There's tungsten lights in the apartment complex. It was kind of the perfect setup for this film and I'm going to show you some of the frames that I shot and give you an idea of how I feel about how the results came out. Okay, spoiler alert, I love this film. It is incredible. I did the same processing I did with my Fuji Natura 1600, which was a C41 stand development process that I modified. And I was really worried that since this is a really fast film and I'm using stand development, which already kind of increases any grain that is already there, I thought it was gonna be really, really grainy and like kind of unintelligible. But as you can see, even the fact that it's a fast film and it should be more grain, it's pretty damn clean. It's not as grainy as I thought it would be. Uh, the colors are fantastic. It doesn't even look like we were shooting after the sun went down. We shot from, I would say, 7 o'clock till about like 10 o'clock. The sun went down at like 7.20, so there's only a couple frames I shot when the sun was still just peeking above the horizon and there was no direct sunlight whatsoever. It was a very dark shoot and there was a couple of times where I had some trouble focusing the camera. I was using my Pentax 6.7 and that camera has a really big, huge, bright viewfinder and even in that case it was pretty dark and it was kind of like times where it take me a little bit longer to focus because of that but I always nailed the focus and yeah, as you can see, the images are beautiful. So would I recommend this film? Yes, I would recommend this film to anybody who is shooting indoors or outdoors with tungsten lighting. Uh, if you do want to shoot it with a filter, you can do that. Like I said, you want to expose it a little bit more for the uh, to make up for the filter. One of the things that really stood out to me about this film is that the color rendition is really accurate. Some of the colors were a little more saturated, uh, like yellows and blues but I was kind of expecting that based on its emulsion. Like I said, the grain was very minimal, very sharp. I didn't do any long exposure, so I didn't get to see what that would look like. But um, overall, I'm super happy with this film. It's really, really good looking. Uh, the negatives were very nice. They were very uh, dense, had a lot of information there, and they were easy to scan, which sometimes color negatives can be really hard to scan if you've got like color shifts, but it was super easy. Everything came out looking really great, and I'm really, really happy with the results. Try Cinestill Film. It's really great. They also have a 50D in 35mm, and they just came out with the 120 medium format version of that, and the 50D is a daylight balanced 50 ISO film. So that means that it's a super slow daylight balanced film, so we're talking bright sunlight, uh, open shade, that kind of stuff. I haven't tried that film yet. That's something I'm really interested in trying and I'm going to pick some up as soon as it's available. I believe it's available after August 31st, I think. Yeah, so whenever my local shop gets some in, which they said as soon as they start shipping they'll get some, so I'm really excited for that. I will try that film and let you know how I think about that. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you go check out Cinestill Film uh, at their website and also you can follow them on Instagram at Cinestill Film. And yeah. See you guys next time.